Alrighty guys, welcome back to another LEGO set review from Brick by Brick, in today's set number 70673, this is the LEGO Ninjago Shirocopter, getting 361 pieces and retailing for $29.99 in the United States. Uh, the box here, uh, one that I have is in perfect condition, and you know, it shows the figures on the top. Uh, it's actually kind of a large um, overall, just um, the, the front is larger than you'd expect, but it's a very thin box for a $30 set. And you got look at the action figures on the back. They have one instruction manual uh, that is hopefully not water damaged, but uh, mine is. Uh, and you know, I, I just use the online instructions, so you no, know, whatever. Uh, but you know, this is one of the Ninjago Season uh, 11 sets that was released in the summer 2019 wave, and this is one of the smaller sets um, in the wave. Um, but it did have that exclusive Zane minifigure, which is quite a bit of a draw. There's no real side build in this set, but we do have this uh, Spinjetsu piece for Jay, and, you know, it's an exclusive color scheme for this set with that transparent, glittery, uh, neon yellowish color, um, which I believe that's also the same color used for the mask, but the mask really heavily looks like it's trans green because of the blue underneath it but if you look at the parts that are not uh, you know that don't have blue plastic directly inside of it like at the tips of these it does look like it's the same color uh, but uh, obviously you know this this is a build I just you know for sake of showing you what it looks like there uh, I took that bottom piece off because obviously it doesn't stand up with that bottom piece not there but this spinner works like you know, normal spinners where you're supposed to sort of spin it like a top. However, it is really hard to spin these ones up well. Uh, that's, that's not terrible, actually. There we go. Uh, but, you know, they're just... This design of the spinner is not as easy to do as the uh, Legacy ones were. Um, it probably just has to do with the mass distribution. But it... Uh, actually, that was a really good one right there. But... You know, I've, I've found myself having trouble uh, getting these ones spinning, so, I don't know, kids might have a tough time with that, and you definitely need to practice it quite a bit. However, you know, it is the same mold used for the Spinded 2 Slams, so you could take this uh, bottom piece and replace it with one of the Spinded 2 Slam base screw pieces, and just use it with those launchers, and then it'll work perfectly fine. And here we have the actual Suricopter build itself, and, you know, for a $30 build, this has a pretty good footprint, because uh, it, you know, does have uh, the tail that extends out quite a bit, and it's got these blades, which, you know, just have a good visual presence, even if there isn't that much actual physical mass to them. Uh, but, you know, the overall color scheme of this thing is pretty pretty decent with the white and the dark azure there, uh, with a little bit of trans uh, light blue uh, sprinkled throughout. Uh, obviously, the blades here are, you know, relatively noticeable. They, you know, Obviously, it's a helicopter, so that's got to be a pretty important part of the design. And, you know, I think that the dark stone green ones there look pretty good. And I believe this color is exclusive to this set for now. If not, maybe it... I actually... Mm, I can't remember what color the Oni Titans were. They might have been this color, too. But, you know, it, it's a relatively uncommon color at that. And the cool thing about it is that it's got this feature back here where you can spin up the blades. Um... And, you know, remotely back here. And you could also, you know, hold it via the tail here and then spin the blades uh, with just one of your fingers there. And I guess we'll give you a little bit of a better view at the blades doing that. And it worked it worked well. Uh, it comes out pretty nicely. And it's a pretty well built up feature. Uh, the tail back here, while well, we're back here, does have one sticker on it. And you do have this pin back here, but you don't have any uh, sideways propeller. So I guess, you know. You just uh, have to turn the whole vehicle somehow in order to make it spin. Uh, I guess you could see these as propellers too, which sort of give it a little bit of extra lift and allow it to control itself side to side. Uh, but, you know, from the front up here, uh, Zane's cockpit area looks pretty decently well done. He's got a little bit of a heads-up display uh, that's done with a sticker on one of these X-Wing canopies. And there you can sort of see all the sticker detail uh, if I just put something else behind it. Uh, but you know, he sits in there at a pretty respectable angle, and 
you know, if we take him out, there's really no detail in there. So I guess all of his controls and everything are in the heads-up display. Uh, they also use these cleaver pieces on the front uh, in order to get an interesting shape up there. And those just um, you know, bend inwards until they hit that canopy piece. Got some stickers here on the side, which help round out the shaping in it. Overall, this area of the build is a really interesting thing to put together and just makes an interesting shape. And it almost completely seals it off as well. There's a little bit of a gap there, but, you know, for the most part, it just works really well. Uh, the side here, not as well closed off. You can see some of the Technic pieces that allow the functions to operate. You can sort of adjust the angle of this thing in order to kind of try and combat that, but it, you're not really going to get it perfect. Uh, that does have a sticker on it as well, uh, which just has some ice detailing. Obviously another sticker here, uh, and you know, the this section overall, you know, is not perfect, but they do a pretty decent job with it, uh, getting the overall shaping to work. You also get a uh, another sticker up here with a little symbol and the spinner crown. Brings in a little bit of gold, which I think works fine with this color scheme, uh, but it's not uh, not the greatest thing ever. Um, you know, just feels a tiny bit messy, but I, I don't mind it. Uh, and you know, the overall uh, design used a lot of weird angles, and it's kind of aided by the use of this Nexonite shield piece, uh, which they use two of on this side and two of on the other side with different stickers, and I guess we can show you the other side. And you get a little bit more uh, angularity up here with the uh, black version of that shield. And these uh, little winglet pieces, you can adjust the angle of them. Um, I think they look best pointed all the way forwards so that they're flush with this, uh, you know, angle here. And you do have these engines here, which you can also spin, which will shoot off those uh, stud shooters. Which I'm not going to shoot off all six because uh, it becomes a pain to sort them all out and you know find them again. Uh, but uh, the last thing, uh, as far as features go, uh, we have these shuriken large blade things, which I guess is probably where it gets the shurikopter name. Uh, but these pieces are actually exclusive in this color currently. Um, they were introduced in this wave, and you know, they have little wheels underneath them so that if you go in for a low dive of sorts, or if you're just, I guess, taxiing down the runway, uh, if this thing needs a runway maybe instead of a... it shouldn't need a runway, but um, I guess if you're just taxiing along the ground somehow, uh, then you'll have these uh, things spinning around, which that um, that does give it a pretty good look, and it does have these little wheels underneath as well, uh, in order for it to spin properly when it's on the ground, you know, and not you know get caught on anything. Uh, but that's pretty much all there is to the actual build of the Shurikopter. The the overall way that it's built up is kind of funky because uh, you got this here, which is all on that angle, uh, and then the back section, which is all built just studs up, you know, from this sort of position here. Uh, so it it just uh, it's interesting how it goes together, and you can look at the instructions if you're interested in seeing that. But that's all for this relatively interesting $30 build. Let's take a look at the three minifigures included. And the minifigure selection is actually pretty good. Both of these figures here are exclusive to this set, um, with, you know, Jay in his Forbidden Spinjitsu outfit, uh, which has that exclusive molded color for the mask, which, as I mentioned earlier, it comes off a little weird because the trans neon yellow comes out a bit green because you know it is dual molded and you can see the blue shine through and it it really combines really well and making it trans green if that's what they were going for but it doesn't work so well with Jay's color scheme so that's mildly unfortunate but it doesn't bother me too much uh, and, you know, it, it is still overall a well-done figure. Zane has uh, his mask with printing in this set, which is exclusive here. Uh, the torso and leg print obviously come in his Forbidden Spinjitzu version, because that is just Jay's regular uh, torso and legs for the Forbidden Spinjitzu variants from Season 11. Uh, but if we turn them around, you can see they do have some back printing, but Zane's is hidden by this cool armor piece, which... Uh, they use that for all of the ninja in Season 11, and it's got that symbol molded up there, uh, and it, it's a cool part, but we'd like to see the back printing, so we do have to remove it. But, uh, I, I guess one other thing about this uh, cool armor piece is that you can uh, fit a sword in it, a katana, regular katana, and, you know, the printing on their backs is fine. Zane has no alternate expression because, you know, he's got that port on the back of his head, but Jay has his regular Ninjago movie face, and Zane does have a really cool front facial expression, but that is the same headpiece that's been used uh, since Season 8. And another uh, incarnation of General Vex here is our bad guy for this set, 
And he does come with the Staff of Ribbons Benditsu, which you get the full vinyl sheet. This is an, on, uh, you know, I, I, this is one from another set where I, I just took uh, this piece. From one of the sets that use the fire one, uh, but you do get all three in every set, so you can choose between them. Uh, and the neutral one, the tan one, that's not used in any set, but you're welcome to just pull it off and swap it out with that one. Uh, and the interesting thing about it is that, you know, the way that that is attached, you know, is just put on this staff piece and, you know, it won't fall down once your minifigure's holding it, because it can't. But that is a cool vinyl thing and it's nice to get. And this uh, piece is dual molded uh, with pearl uh, dark gray and then the train's blue, so you get a little bit of marbling up at the tip, which is kind of cool. But uh, that's not really super related to the figure. And the figure itself is pretty well done as well. Uh, you know, he does come in quite a few sets, three of them, which I think is more than any of the other um, Ice Samurai, but his uh, helmet molding is really cool, really intricate, and you know, just the dual molding on there is great. It's gunmetal gray and translite blue, which there's also a dark red version uh, that's used on the generic Blizzard Warriors, but uh, again, it's, it's just a cool piece, and I like getting another color combination here. The face print on him is exclusive to his character. Obviously, he comes in all three sets that he comes in. It has no back printing, but his torso uh, and legs are relatively, you know, relatively plain and you know, not super interesting. I think they're the same as the other, uh, the other Ice Samurai guys. Overall, I think that the set, you know, represents pretty decent value. I think, you know, the part, price per part ratio looks pretty good and there's nothing to complain about there but even beyond that the volume of stuff here is also pretty good so can't really complain uh, the figure selection here I think is really good uh, with the really nice version of season 11 Zane which you're gonna want and that's exclusive to the set and the forbidden spinjitsu J is also pretty good I think it's it might be my least favorite of the forbidden spinjitsu variants just because of the green tint to the mask uh, but you know it's it's pretty well done, and the spinner, which is also exclusive, and I guess almost would be considered part of this figure. Uh, that, uh, with the glittery uh, trans neon yellow, that looks pretty good. And, you know, these uh, spinners do also just look good on display, beyond the fact that you can also spin them, even if it is difficult to do so. And Vex is just Vex, he's kind of there, but he's a well-produced figure and pretty good. So, you know, I really want to say that this is a fantastic set. There's something holding me back from doing so. I don't really know what it is, but there's something about the look of this set. Maybe it's just the fact that it feels unfinished around the sides here, or you can see the inside, sort of. But, uh, m maybe it's that? But, I don't know, there's just something about it that doesn't feel as polished as some of the other uh, Ninjago sets, especially from this wave, and I guess overall. So I, I don't think that this is going to go down in the history books as one of the best sets Ninjago ever made. But I think that it represents a perfectly reasonable value for what it is, and if you see something in here that you want, uh, I, I would recommend it. I guess if there's nothing here that is jumping out at you, um, I, I still think that it's probably like, if you have $30 to spend and you're trying to spend it on a Ninjago set, this one isn't a terrible one to pick up, but, you know, I don't think that it will blow you away uh, versus you know something like maybe the gamers market from the wave after. But uh, yeah, overall, I think it's a pretty good set and worth the price, though. There are a couple small weird drawbacks that are a little bit hard to place. So you know, it's not, I'd probably give it about a B, B plus for what it is, you know. So. Th those are my thoughts on uh, this set. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys all next time in the next video.